Three, two, one, go. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> a little while ago, I made a video about the Switch e-bike conversion kit and how much I liked it. Well, following that video, a company called 100G, the link's in the description below, reached out to me and said, we make an e-bike conversion kit that we think you'll like even more. So, they've sent me one. So today, I'm gonna go through what's in this box, we'll fit it to my bike, and then I will give you my thoughts on how well it rides and whether or not it's something you should consider for your bike. Okay, let's get started and see what's in the box. Um, that's just empty cardboard. This isn't, this is heavier. Um, let's have a look. So this one's starting to open, so let's open that up. Um, oh, this is, this is the brains. So this goes, designed to go either on your um, kind of diagonal bar or the vertical bar that the seats goes into. And this is the battery. So, and it also has the control panel on top and the connections to go to every other part of the, uh, of the kit. So that's super important and cool in black, to be fair, that would be, that'd be quite discreet. And I do like the idea of the weight being on the, uh, the vertical bar as opposed to the handlebars. So be intrigued to see that. Um, big part of the package here is the wheel itself, which I think I can just about pull out. Oh, and it's kind of anodized. That looks cool. So it's black and the motor is there in the middle. Same as on the switch kit. That looks nice, actually. I like that. It's a, that's quite a cool looking wheel. So it's kind of silver on the outside, but anodized on the inside. Like that, very cool. What else have we got? Instructions, presumably. Oh, yeah. Picture instructions, talking through how you do it, which seems easy enough. Okay, more packaging. It feels like there's something in it. Oh. A phone holder. So the idea on this is there is a free downloadable app which you, um, once you've got installed on your phone, then the phone holder uh, will go, yeah, let's go all the kit to be able to do it in here, will go on your handlebars. So it'll fit any phone by the looks of things. I mean, that's, that's quite ugly. I might use the um, uh, one of my existing phone holders uh, for my handlebars, but cool that it's in there. So let's find out what we've got in this box. Oh, what was that? So that was a power cable, UK power um, socket as well. So it's come with a UK plug, which is great. Uh, I'm guessing then this must be the charging unit for the battery, which it is. So it's just a power adapter for the battery, uh, which just goes straight into the back of the unit. Um, so that's great. That'd be easy enough to charge. Presumably that thing's easy enough to remove from the bike. So we get rid of this box now. There's nothing in it. Uh, and in here we have quite a few things wrapped in uh, a protective uh, bag. So we've got, okay, so here is, the, I'll go through these one at a time. Here's the holder for the battery, which is uh, simple enough, actually, by the looks of things. I think you take that cover off and then the, um, yeah, and then the battery itself will clip onto that and into the base. So that'll be good, easy enough to install. Judging by these holes, you can just use the same bolts that are there for um, your bottle holder. So that'll go on either bar, I guess. And then we've got the cadence sensor. So I remember this, this looks very familiar uh, in terms of the one that's on the switch kit. A fitting kit, so here's tools for removing the, uh, your tire. And then loads of tie wraps, which is good. And last but not least, ooh, it's a throttle. Obviously illegal in the UK uh, on the highways, but I will install it and obviously only use it on private roads, but I'll, uh, I'll definitely have a go. <laughs> so that's the full kit. So I guess the next thing is I will get my bike out and we'll make sure that the switch kit isn't on there and then I'll install this instead and then we can make a uh, direct comparison. Okay, so the kit is now fitted to my bike. I have moved the switch kit onto my son's bike. So just to take you around this, just in case you haven't seen my other video, the way the switch kit works, you've got a bracket here on the handlebars, you've got your battery that sits on top, it's removable. You push that button and then you lift it off and then it slides back onto these fittings here. 
which I will do, there we go. Uh, and all the cables come out of the bottom of there and then they're connected to the wheel. So the wheel has a 250 watt motor in the middle. You attach your own disc brakes. Uh, it comes in silver, you can pay extra for black. I didn't, um, wish I had. Doesn't look very good in silver, I don't think, particularly when the back wheel is black uh, on both bikes. Um, and then also coming out of there is the cadence sensor, which is down here. So this is basically this little bit here, and then you put this magnetic strip, and as the wheels, uh, as this goes round, uh, based as you're on your pedaling, um, then that will flash because it sees the magnets, and that tells it how much to drive the front motor. So that, in a, in, in a nutshell, is kind of how these kits work. This also has, I paid extra for the accelerator, but we'll come back to that in a minute, the, uh, the throttle. And then the new kit, so it's in situ, and I've got to admit, I think it looks great. Now, admittedly, I chose a black one. Now, my bike is black and white, so fairly logical. And the front wheel has the same two, well, essentially, probably it's going to be very similar, brushless 250-watt motor in the middle. Um, this one comes as black with kind of this, this silver round trim around the outside as standard and looks brilliant. It looks really, really good for it, to be fair. Uh, and the cable's on the other side of this, uh, but it feeds up and then comes down into the bottom of this unit. So it's a bit, bit messy up here. This could actually move up a tiny bit because uh, this just screws into um, where your water bottle goes, but I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but essentially, you've got a cadence sensor, same thing here. You've got the, uh, the ring just actually on that. I've actually, this is the ring that came with the switch kit. I've left it on because it's actually a better fit for this bike. And that one is a better fit for that bike. That's the one that came with the, um, with the new kit. So this, there's no, arm on it it just literally goes into the gap there um, and it just fits beautifully and then you just put this metal clip over the top i actually couldn't get it into the gap on this bike because there isn't one but this one the switch one has this kind of arm which you then strap to the uh the kind of pedal shaft bit there uh, which means you can position it carefully just to, with some allen keys just to kind of tweak it so i've left them that way around but they do exactly the same thing i mean that's not really what we're testing but it's um yeah as it happens it just works works better on this bike and that one works better on that bike so this is the brains of the operation, so the battery. Now I'll take this off just to show you how this looks. So literally it's a case of just sliding that up and then lifting it off. So if we look at the bracket first, the bracket just goes in, you take your water bottle off and then you just put this on instead and you can adjust the height a bit. So I think I probably will move this up. The downside is because this is the big battery, which is great because it's the most comparable to the switch battery over there, um, it also means I can't get an actual water bottle on. It's quite big, but not a problem. It's not a big deal. I'll just find an alternative way to, uh, to carry refreshment. Um, but yeah, so the advantage of this, and I do think it's an advantage, although we'll see what it's like in testing, is that the battery can then sit down kind of middle of the bike, so your weight distribution's a bit better. And this just sits on there, and it's got this ring here and the socket. You can see on there. And as you push that down, there's a little hole for it. Just give it a push and it just all slots in. So therefore it's secure, but then you also have to just put this rubber strap over the top just to make sure it stays in place, which I will just clip on the other side, there we go. And then if you want, which I think is a really cool feature, is if I then push this in, it's now locked. That doesn't lift off anymore. So it means from a security point of view, you could technically, you could leave it on the bike. Um, or you could carry it with it, it's up to you, but you could leave it on the bike knowing it's safe. You cannot do that on the switch kit. You have to take the battery with you. This has um, a little control center on top. So that's how this one's run. So we power it up. It's at 100% and we'll check what level it's at. So it's at level five, which is the top level. Uh, and on the switch kit, um, you also have it on top of the battery. So you hold your finger on the power button. And there you go. And this one's also at 100% as well. Uh, and again, it's also on level five, which we adjust by pressing up and down on there. Uh, what you do have on the switch kit though, is if you hold your finger on the up button, it does have a light. Now, of course, there is a new and updated switch battery um, kit available now. So I'm comparing against the, my existing kit. Um, the difference on the new one is I believe it's exactly the same wheel. I believe it's exactly the same cadence sensor. The only difference is this. It's a different bracket, so it doesn't have those kind of visible pins that I showed you earlier, this bit. It's a bit neater. Uh, and also the battery itself, uh, I think is physically a bit smaller. Although it's worth noting, this is the Pro. So this is the bigger version of the old um, switch kit. Uh, and the bigger version of the new switch kit, which I think is called Max, doesn't have the same battery capacity. This is actually slightly smaller. I'll just show you the figures on screen now. You can compare um, the, uh, the Pro and the Max in terms of the actual battery capacity. But anyway, back to this kit. So once it's on there, the way it works, is you turn this and the sensor starts to see that you're pedaling 
and therefore it powers the motor in the front wheel. So you end up with a two wheel drive bike. Now I'm gonna let it run. I'll stop the um, back bike, the back uh, wheel, and then we'll let this run. So you can see from a resistance point of view, it's not bad at all. Um, it'll just keep rolling. There's gonna be a tiny bit, but then to, be, to a degree, some of that's from the disc brake. So if I stop it, Interesting with the disc brake, when you first, because obviously you're swapping the entire wheel, um, so you're taking your tyre off your existing wheel and then fitting it onto the new wheel which has the hub in the middle, the motor in the middle. So you fit this on and your own disc brake, you've got to fit, fit that. Mine was rubbing like hell, which I think is quite common when you swap the uh, wheels. If you ha do have that issue, really quick fix, actually I found this on YouTube, um, is you unscrew this Allen key here, this with an Allen key here, you unscrew this one uh, and then spin the wheel nice and fast, pull the brake, keep the brake ha uh, lever held and then tighten it back up and that will align it uh, in line with um, the new wheel and the disc brake. Simple solution, but it works. It's really good. But anyway, alternative to pedaling, of course, is the throttle and I got the throttle with this as well. The big difference here is the design because this throttle, I mean, it works very straight straightforward. You just push it down and not surprising that the wheel goes. Very straightforward. So let's just stop that. The big difference is this is just really well designed. You see it's got a hinge on it here. So you just unscrew it on the back, which uses just another Phillips nut there. And then so you basically just kind of put it onto the handlebars like that where you want them, tighten it up and it's good to go. Cable comes straight out the bottom, really neat. And it's shaped around exactly how you expect the layout of the hardware that's on the handlebars. Because most bikes are gonna have a brake and gear levers and the brake sits on top of the gear lever. This is the brake, this is the gear lever. Um, and so it, it creates that shape and they've designed the accelerator to go in that gap, which is brilliant. That's how it should be. And so it's very natural when you're riding to be able to just reach over with your thumb. You know, and you still, you've still got your finger on the brake and you've got full control if you want, it's great. This is a terrible design. So it's designed with this kind of 90 degree bit coming out, which means that when you're positioning, one, it doesn't have a hinge. You have to take everything off and slide it on and then tighten it up. But two, at that angle, it doesn't go anywhere. Because you said, you've got all this hardware down here with regards to the, the brakes and the gears. This takes up so much space that when you've got something that's got a 90 degree um, cable coming out of it, it doesn't fit anywhere. It just physically doesn't go anywhere. The only place you can put it is over here or where I've put it. But to do that, I've had to angle it in such a way that I'm having to do it with my finger like that because I can't, I can't get my thumb that high. But otherwise, if I lower that, I can't change gear. It's ludicrous, it's such a terrible design. Um, Switch have done so many things right with this. That is not one of them. But anyway, that aside, let's now go and have a go and see how they ride. And we'll try the, uh, the chainless test and see which one's quicker. So I'll need to rope in my wife to assist on this. So we'll see you in a second. Right, so the first test is we'll try just the throttle. So if you were off uh, public highways, because of course you can't use the throttle on a public highway, then you could use the throttle to power the bike without pedaling. So first <laughs> test is a race between my wife and I. So we have the switch kit, and then I have the uh, Gico kit. Um, there is a distinct weight disadvantage on my side, so we'll swap bikes and do this again in a minute. But first and foremost, let's have a go at throttle only. So you ready? Three, I am. Three, two, one, go. I'm not going to win this. Okay, so round two, I'm now on the switch bike kit, so obviously I'm my extra weight, uh, and my wife now has the Gico kit. So it's just there, pushing down on there with your thumb, and I'll grab this. And so, ready? You got it? Three, two, one, let's go. Oh. Okay, so basically, whichever one I'm not on is quicker. <laughs> this test is the unnerving one. So this is the one where you set off and the chains have been removed. So we've got no connection on either bike. So it's just going to react to how quickly we pedal. So as you pedal forward, the cadence sensor is going to see that the pedals are moving and it will drive the motor. If it doesn't move, we fall off. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, pedal. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 
so it works. I mean, the switch kit we've tried before, but let me have a go <laughs> on the Gico kit and see how that works. So here we are, last test. So we've swapped. I'm now on the Gico. My wife is on the switch. I am obviously a little heavier. Chains are still off. So we are freewheeling and it's just going to be down to <laughs> how quickly you pedal and how quickly the motor responds. So you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, it's, it's. So I think we can conclude from that that basically they're very, very similar. The difference, of course, being the weight of the ride and me being heavier. However, I would say the switch probably delivers the power that tiny bit quicker, so the torque is just a little bit more responsive. However, once you get going, they're very, very similar. I'm going to now get changed and go on a 20 mile ride, so I'll let you know how long this battery lasts. So I'm going to put it on level five. I'm going to pedal the whole way, so I'm using pedal assist. Um, that should give me a fairly good speed, and I'll let you know how long it lasts. So I'm about 15 miles into a bike ride on the Gico kit, and uh, it's a beautiful day, and the battery has just run out. So that's 15 miles of it on full max, so it's on level five the whole time. I pedaled the whole time, so I wasn't using the throttle, um, but that was with full support. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with that because the, uh, the average speed I've done is about 22 miles per hour, which considering this is an up and down route, um, that's remarkable. So yeah, very impressed so far. Let's go to the other seven miles home, unassisted. <laughs> See you in a bit. And so it's time to compare and conclude. So let's start with cost. I paid £625 for my Switch Pro kit a couple of years ago, and the current Max kit likely costs around the same, despite now having nearly 30% less battery capacity, albeit in a smaller and better looking package. Now I say it likely costs around the same because that's the problem with Switch pricing, in that you cannot see exactly what the kit costs on their website. You have to sign up to join the waiting list, Wait until they open the order books and then make your choice, which is the first time you'll see the price you're going to pay. Now once you've made your choice, you then have to wait. My kit took six months to arrive from ordering, though I have seen in the comments from my last Switch video that some people's kits have taken longer and some shorter. And that's the point, you just don't know. Now the Gico kit from 100G, their ordering process is much more straightforward. You go onto their website, the link is in the description below, and choose the kit you would like to buy based on which level of power and which battery you choose. Now the kit I reviewed today costs $586, though there's currently a $50 saving if you subscribe for updates, bringing the price down to $536 or approximately £454 at today's exchange rate with free shipping to the UK, the US and I suspect anywhere else in Europe as I tried a few countries at checkout and all were free. Now the switch kit comes in two versions, both using the same 250 watt motor in the front wheel, which generates an impressive 40 newton meters of torque, and then either the max battery, which weighs 1.1 kilograms, or a smaller, lighter air version weighing in at just 700 grams. Now as I mentioned earlier in the video, the max battery has a capacity of 180 watt hours, whereas the air has a capacity of 98 watt hours. Now I did ask Switch if I could borrow the updated kit and they were going to lend me one right up until I told them I was planning a comparison video, at which point they said they would not provide a kit for that kind of video. Make of that what you will. Now the Gico kit from 100G is available both as the front motor version which I tested today but also as a rear wheel or even dual wheel version but we'll stick with the front motor version. There's a choice of motor from the 250 watt unit fitted to my bike right now, which generates 38 Newton meters of torque, to a 350 watt model or even a 500 watt model, which generates 48 Newton meters of torque and is capable of 53 kilometers an hour or about 33 miles per hour. Though remember, both the 350 watt and the 500 watt versions would not be legal on UK highways but probably incredible fun on private land. Now much like Switch, 100G also offer a choice of battery sizes for the Gico kit, but they have an impressive seven different choices. Starting at 187 watt hours and weighing 1.3 kilograms 
up to a whopping 540 watt hours, which weighs a fairly chunky 2.6 kilograms. The Geco battery I use today has a 280 watt hour capacity and weighs 1.9 kilograms, making it a good comparison to the 250 watt hour 1.5 kilogram Switch Pro battery you also saw today. Now when you are considering an e-bike conversion or even a ready-made e-bike, the battery capacity will decide how far you'll be able to travel. Now for example, as the rating suggests, a 250 watt hour battery can deliver 250 watts for an hour, such as driving a standard 250 watt e-bike motor at full power. Therefore, the kit I reviewed today with its 280 watt hour battery will run the 250 watt motor for just over an hour. And GECO claim you could travel 30 kilometers or about 18.6 miles on one charge. And after today, I can't disagree with this estimate. I set off on my ride this afternoon having conducted earlier test rides and without topping up the battery and got about 15 miles at full power going up some pretty steep hills without issue. The switch kit weighs less and has a tiny bit of extra torque which you saw in the test with my wife but that smaller battery simply isn't going to take you as far. Now from a usability point of view I have to say that I strongly prefer the battery being down on the frame as opposed to on the handlebars. Plus I think it looks more normal. It made the extra weight of the battery impossible to notice, though I would be intrigued to try the 700 gram switch air battery and gauge the impact of that on your ride. Of course, that brings a major compromise on the range using just a 98 watt hour battery. That would power the 250 watt motor in the switch wheel at full power for just 20 minutes. Now that's brilliant for a short commute, but it's not so much for anything else, unless you turn the power right down. Plus, you'd have to carry the charger with you each time you went out. Of course, for the Gico, sacrificing your water bottle to accommodate the battery is a bit of a pain. But water bottle holders that go on the back of your saddle are readily available and very inexpensive, so it's far from a deal breaker. Both kits are available with a choice of colours. I think the new Switch battery is available in a choice of five colour trims around the predominantly black design, while the Gico battery comes in a choice of four solid colours. Both kits are available in multiple wheel sizes, from 16 inch for your Brompton foldable bike to the commonest 28 or 29 inch wheels which are fitted to most road, hybrid and mountain bikes. I did like the Gico app, I had that open on the phone today when I was riding, allowing me to keep a close eye on the exact remaining capacity of my battery, give me the option to modify the power level and show me my current speed. However, if I'm honest, I would probably rather have the Strava app open and view the more detailed data available on there, much like I do when I use the switch kit. At the end of the day, the batteries in both kits have capacity and power level indicators visible and within reach on the units themselves. So, which is best? The switch kit is very impressive and I do think the new battery in the battery mount is a big step forward aesthetically over my pro kit. However, this progression has cost capacity, and that is a shame. The extra torque from the switch was apparent in our test today, but only when setting off from stationary. After that, you would never notice. The ambiguous pricing and potentially huge waiting time is a clever business model for switch, taking payment for all units before they're manufactured and avoiding offering a specific delivery time is every company's dream scenario for cash flow, but not so good for the customer. Now on the other hand, the Gico kit, delivery is free, takes up to 25 days in Europe and up to 30 days in the US, and in the form tested today represents a not insignificant £170 saving over the lesser powered switch kit. That will buy a lot of seat mounted water bottles. On top of that, in my opinion, I think the Gico looks better on the bike because of the mid-mounted battery and it felt less intrusive during the ride by hiding its weight directly under mine. Now I liked that the great looking black wheel was standard as opposed to a cost option from Switch. And the Gico throttle design was a million times better than the poorly designed Switch version. Throw in the seven different battery options and you can easily build the perfect conversion kit specifically for you, your existing bike and your personal requirements. So for me, the Switch kit will be staying on my son's bike and the Gico will be staying on mine. It simply ticks more boxes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Links for both kits are in the description below and I'll see you on the next video.